Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we are going to be in the King James Version of the Holy Bible, and we are in the book of Acts, chapter 6. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Remember God's precepts to provide for the widows and orphans. And here they are providing for the widows, but now the Greeks are saying, look, you're not doing for the Greek widows as you are doing for the Hebrews. So there was this distinction that rose. And then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason or desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom ye may appoint over this business. In other words, pick out seven guys and have them take care of this, because we're not leaving off what we're doing, preaching the word of God. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Now this Nicholas here, you know, in Revelation chapter 2, when Jesus says, they have the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Now this guy right here, this is the guy that does the Nicolaitans. He's like their leader. And when it says here that he's a proselyte, he was at one time pagan, and then he became a Jew, and now he has become a Christian. So it's like he just goes around, you know, into whatever he wants to do at the time, but there's no commitment in his heart. And then he goes into the church and he teaches the people that, oh, it's okay for you to have um, sexual immorality. It's fine, you know, you can eat. And, and sacrifice things to idols and eat it and drink blood and do all these things that are totally against what God has told man to do and not to do. And this is why Jesus hates the Nicolaitans. So um, this is the guy, Nicholas, that caused all that with the Nicolaitans. And verse 6, whom they set before the apostles... And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Now you would think, well, now why would they pick this guy? But remember, Jesus picked Judas Iscariot, who was a devil. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. And these are troublemakers, and the Cyrenians, and the Alexandrians, and of them of Cecil, Cecil, excuse me, Cilicia, and of Asia disputing with Stephen. Now they're disputing with Stephen. Now Stephen was quite the Christian, full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith, quite remarkable Christian. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, or they bribed men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. 
And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. But still, did they stop? No, they didn't stop. Did they recognize that this was a man of God? No, they didn't. Because these, <laughs> like Satan, a liar and a murderer from the beginning, you will know the fruit, the tree by its fruit. And you can see that these trees are producing rotten fruit. And so there was Stephen, <laughs> a wonderful man of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. And there, in here in verse 8, it says, Full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Clearly, <laughs> a, a man of God. And so, but we have these people, and these are the same types of people that we're going to come up against in the end times, that are going to come up and accuse us. You know, the Bible says that their mothers and fathers and they're going to turn against you. It'll be this type of thing. And they'll be lying about you and telling untruths. So expect that this will be happening. And don't be surprised. And prepare yourself so that you don't fall away. That your faith isn't shaken when this comes on you. Because it most certainly could come on you. I have no idea who it will affect. But Jesus said, you, and he was speaking to us. In the red writing is Jesus speaking in Matthew 24. You can also see in Mark 13 and Luke 21. These words that Jesus spoke were warnings. Were trying to prepare us. But remember, he said there was so much he still wanted to tell us, but that we weren't able at that time to accept it. And then later, he took John the Apostle in the Spirit to heaven and gave him the revelation, the final book in this Bible, of the things that were going to be coming on the earth. But this isn't, Revelation isn't the only book that tells us what's going to be happening in the end times. We just looked at Habakkuk. We also looked at Zephaniah. These are prophecy books telling us the things that are going to be happening. And then it's is in Isaiah, and then it's in Jeremiah, and it's in Ezekiel. These prophetic books written by the prophets were for then at the time that they lived but also for later days like in Daniel it said close up the book Daniel because it's for a later time don't worry about it just close up the book so that's what that is and so we can see the things that happened to the apostles and the disciples. And we can expect the same to come upon us. But, and if we're not ready, if we're not preparing ourselves by prayer and supplication and fasting to strengthen our spirits, are we going to be able to stand? These are the things that we need to do to strengthen ourselves. Fasting. Praying, reading the scripture. And so we will get through because God will never give us more than we can handle. And um, if we are tempted, 
we pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil, the evil one. And so pray that prayer often, as well as the Psalm 91 prayer of protection. But um, anyway, I'm going to just stop here now and we'll take up chapter 7 tomorrow. And as always, <laughs> I love you.